Hello, 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 everybody. So awesome to be hanging out inside of this group with you. Hello, Tara, whether you're on live, you hop on live or you hop on later. Hello, ladies. Uh, I am Tanya Rainier, money mindset maven, business and law of attraction coach. And I would love to talk to you about money mindset. Hello, Tara, there you are. <laughs> so, we're gonna talk about all the things today because here's the deal. You're in Tara's group to learn how to write copy. Why? Because you wanna make the moolah, right? We're writing copy so that we can establish ourselves, define ourselves, really set ourselves apart in business so that we can ultimately bring in more income. If you're doing it just because you love to write about yourself, well, I guess we probably don't have to have this talk. <laughs> you are doing this to make money. So I wanna help you to put this copy and all the things you're learning with Tara into action and really help your copy to attract the clients that you desire, the money that you want as a result of building those relationships. <laughs> Sarah, I love writing about myself. You're the only one, honey. <laughs> You're the only one I know. Um, and I'm glad you do because that's what makes you a word unicorn. So speaking of unicorn, we're going to talk about unicorns today. Um, so I, we posted, we were chatting a little bit in the group, in the comments about your money mindset questions. So I'm going to answer some of those for you. We're going to dive in a little bit. So the, the topic or the mindset block around this is what I have always made, right? So we have this, especially, especially if we've had a real job in the real world or we've come from a corporate setting where we come from a world where other people dictate our worth, right? So if you get a job, there's already a predetermined rate at which they are willing to pay you. Correct. We all we're all on board there, right? So you go to corporate, you apply, and there may be a little bit of negotiation room there. Most people don't negotiate a whole lot when they get a job, right? You get a career, you get out of college. I mean, seriously, you guys, in high school, do you remember those assessments that we took? What are the um, started with an O, O H I S or something or who is or who uh, something? Can't remember, it's been a long time since high school. But we took those assessments to figure out what we'd be good at, and then they give you the ranges of salary. Do you guys remember doing that? And you're like, oh, I would love to do that, but it doesn't pay anything. Next, right? So we are conditioned from childhood and going through the system in what our parents and teachers and everybody taught us that we are to grow up and get a job and it fits in a certain mold and there's a predetermined salary or ceiling on what you can make in that career or in that job. So we are, we're not used to determining our own worth. We are trained to let other people do that for us. That's the one thing that I just wanna like help you get out of your head right now. So in this beautiful world of entrepreneurship, you get to break all the rules and then create your own. You get to decide what you're worth. So when you say I've, I've come from a world of only making so much, this is what I've always made, or this is the maximum amount I've ever made, that's because you let somebody else decide. That's because you're coming from that world and you still have an employee mindset. If you take on an employer mindset, you're thinking bigger. You're thinking more expansively and not only do you need to be thinking about what your take-home pay is, but hey, girlfriend, you got business expenses and taxes to pay, and you've got to like plan to grow your business. That requires a lot more income. So when you think about, hey, this is what I've always made, dude, quadruple it. Legit. Because you need that much money rolling in if you want to continue to make that much, first of all. But I want you to think bigger. So now that you get to make the rules, what rules are you gonna create for yourself? What would you like to make? So what would life be like if you made four times that much next year? What would life be like for you? How would it feel to be pulling in that kind of dough? And when it starts to feel scary and weird, 
or risky or uncomfortable or out of alignment, that's when we need to have a talk. That's when the blocks start coming up. That's when we need to address some limiting beliefs and some fears because it's those blocks and those reactions, the, the thoughts that conjure up the negative feelings, those are the ones we need to work on. So if you're afraid of making more money, what's the fear? What's it rooted in? What specifically are you afraid of? We can work through that. What is the risk? What's gonna happen if you make a ton of money? Is it the fraud syndrome? Is it fear that nobody's gonna pay that? Because that was legit another one, right? They won't pay me that or they won't pay that. It'll be too expensive. So that was another one of your comments. I think this was Michaela's. Um, who, who won't pay that, first of all? So answer these questions. I hope you guys are writing this stuff down. Um, who won't pay that? So that's one of the big things. And you guys, if you have questions as I'm rambling on, you don't, this isn't, this is very informal. Please chat with me, talk to me. Okay, so who won't pay that and why? What do you know about them <laughs> that makes you think that they won't pay that? And even more so, is price the only consideration? Because if you are looking at your services, your new course, your offer, well, I'm gonna sneeze. Um, when you're thinking about your offer and the only thing you're thinking about is price, you're a commodity. Here's the thing, you are not a commodity. You are not the same as everybody else. You are different. You're a unicorn, right? You have these magical abilities that are inherent and unique to you. They may be simple things that you take for granted, or they may be really detailed and skill-specific things. Yes, Tara, for real, right? We all have this block. Because we think, first of all, we think, I wouldn't pay that. Well, hell no, you wouldn't. You could do it yourself. Why would you hire somebody else to do it, right? You're not going to pay for something you already have. You just don't. So when you already have a gift, you're not going to pay for it. When you're hot, like when you just get done eating like a gigantic cheeseburger, you're not going to pay $55 for a steak. You're full. You don't need it. But if you're starving and you haven't eaten in three days, you would pay anything for some way worse food than a steak or a cheeseburger, right? Or, sorry, if there's any vegans in here, I'm hungry. So, <laughs> um, so you think about, you don't pay for something you already have because it loses its value. You will pay an arm and a leg for something that you desire and that is really, really valuable. And why is it valuable? That's really the question to answer. Why is it valuable to that person? And it's gonna be for different reasons than it would be valuable to you. So somebody is going to value you differently than they would value somebody else. You make them feel a certain way. Maybe they're paying you to just be in your energy. Maybe they're paying you because you make things easy or you break things down and make them really tangible. Maybe they're paying you because of the way that you make them feel when you're working one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe other people they've worked with have made them feel like, like they weren't enough or they were insufficient or they weren't keeping up, right? I've had people tell me all of those things. So it's the things that you would never even consider that make you amazingly valuable. People buy you. They don't buy your stuff. They buy you and they buy the way that you deliver it and what is uniquely different. So here's my advice. Don't try to be better than everybody else because there's always gonna be somebody who's better, right? There's always gonna be somebody who is doing what you do and who's been doing it for longer. They've got a bigger following. They have more high profile connections. They you know, have been on the cover of Forbes, they've been published in Huffington Post. Like there's always going to be somebody who you're comparing yourself to, if you allow yourself to, that's better. Don't try to be better than them. And if you're 
not trying to be better, then they're not a competition. Just be different. Be yourself and be uniquely incredible. And when you are different, then there is no competition and you don't have to compare yourself to people anymore. So be be different and how and really, really get in touch with how you're different. And legit, you guys, if you need help with all this, come see me. Um, we I like to work on that when we're doing pricing. So what is it that makes you different? And then what else did you ask? Um, so again, when we're talking about competition, you guys, you, somebody put in the comments, my prices are aligned with other people in my field. So again, you're comparing yourself to your competition. First of all, stop doing that. Just stop. Never do it again. Like, I don't even care. There's so many gurus out there and people that will tell you, know your competition, know what they're doing. And that's good um, for market research purposes. And that's good when it comes time to add value to what it is that you've already created. So I, I like to know what my competitors are doing simply so that I can become different. So I'm not just recreating the wheel. There is this, this thing, right? When you tap into source, this collective consciousness, we all can tap in. And when you're really good at aligning back to yourself, right? If you spend time meditating, if you, you know, do a lot of inner work, if you do a lot of mindset work and you're really connected to yourself and you feel in alignment, you guys have probably all had this experience where the ideas just flow, right? It's almost like you're not thinking them. They're, they're like downloading from somewhere. They're, they're flowing through you and you're like, dude, that was brilliant. Like I'm a freaking genius. High five to me where you like, you didn't sit and struggle for that idea. You weren't racking your brain, you weren't stressed out, it just came and you weren't intentionally trying to create ideas in your mind, right? Have you guys had that? Give me a thumbs up or um, hearts or something if you've had that experience and I, and I will stop trying to explain it. So the, the, what is happening when that happens is you are legit downloading from source. So you're downloading from God, a higher power, collective consciousness, whatever you would like to call it. You're getting ideas from somewhere and you legit, you're a conduit for these ideas. It has been documented throughout history, way before there was internet or carrier pigeons or anything else, way before Christopher Columbus discovered America, way before there were ships and we knew that, you know, there was other continents in other places, right? where there's been documented histories of inventions happening at the same time in different areas of the globe. How does that happen? Like, how does one invent a sewing machine in South America and yet the same sewing machine, the same concept or invention gets invented in like Asia and the same thing gets invented somewhere else, right? All at roughly the same time. How is it that three people in three different areas of the globe get the same idea at the same time? Collective consciousness, right? So when you are just in flow and you're downloading these ideas, it, first of all, it becomes easy. But second of all, you're not the only one coming up with these ideas. So the idea that you are always going to be like that, you're always going to be completely, you know, the only one. No, I have so many people that that are afraid to put their stuff out there. They're afraid to price. They feel like they're always competing. And the truth is there's always going to be people with similar ideas. What is going to save you from having those beliefs or those, you know, that knowing that other people are going to have the same ideas is going to be finding out why you're amazing and shutting down the competition. Don't look at it. If it bothers you or it makes you feel like crap about yourself or it makes you second guess yourself, Stop following these people. Unfollow them on Facebook. Stop hanging out in the Facebook groups that make you feel inferior. Like just stop until you get your mindset right, until you feel amazing and powerful and in charge and in control, and then start opening back up to those things again. Tara says, when I'm writing in flow and read it later, I'm like, whoa, who wrote that? That's good. <laughs> I know, right? It is, it is super amazing. It's an amazing thing. I feel like that all the time where I'm like, oh, that was just, that was just the best thing. I love these ideas. The other, the other thing that came up 
when it comes to competition is if I charge more, I'd have to offer more. Okay. Why? Is what you're currently offering not valuable? Do you think you've hit the limit? Are you getting hit and miss results? So where does that belief really come from? And what does offering more entail? So when you're in the mindset of time is money, hustle is money, you have to work hard to make money, all that stuff, we often think that if we're going to offer more, that we have to create more work for ourselves. Sometimes and most times that additional TLC does not does not take any more effort from you. It could be simple tweaks. It could be in the case of this beautiful online digital space, just offering uh, access to resources you already have created. It could be just a little bit of extra flexibility. It could be um, a little bit more access perhaps to you, but without creating more work. It could just be the feeling of more value. It just could be like, like an imaginary hug. So for me, for instance, my one-on-one -on -one clients, they have unlimited access to me. There's tremendous value in that because when you're working in mindset, your problems aren't isolated to an hour a week via Zoom chat, right? You are going to come up with stuff over and over. And there's going to be weeks where you're like, dude, I'm in flow. Things are great. And then there's going to be weeks where the world starts to crumble and nothing is working. And, you know, you need a little bit more handholding and hugs, right? So there's tremendous value in that. Does it take a whole lot more time for me? No, because it averages out over the long the long term, but financially it's it's worth a lot more. Sarah, thank you. Thank you for being being transparent and vulnerable and saying that. It comes from thinking I'm not good enough. Then that's where we need to work. We need to work on why you believe that and where that's coming from. Often it's coming from only a few places. So um, my Julie Ford, who is in my Facebook group, she's amazing. She has a saying that cracks me up. She says it takes, uh, oh gosh, and I'm going to mess it up now. It takes 10 attaboys to overcome one you dumb shit. <laughs> so what does that mean? Let's break it down. It takes one insult, one criticism to plummet our sense of worth. It takes only one, right? To have us question the way we think and feel about ourselves. And it takes 10 compliments, 10 wins, 10 accomplishments or successes to refute and overpower and overshadow that one criticism. Because we give so much power to that criticism, to that insult, to that failure, that momentary lapse in judgment, that doubt, whatever it is that, that brought our vibe down, we, have, we feel like we have to work 10 times harder to get it back up. So that is simply because that's what we're focused on. You're spending all your time and energy focusing on that, where what if we changed it? What if we flipped the switch and it was the opposite? And it took 10 criticisms to get our attention, 10 insults. What if we eliminated the triggers in our life that were making us feel like crap? The people, the places we're hanging out. What if we, minim maybe you can't eliminate all of them, but what if we mim minimize them and we spent more time and energy focusing on what serves us? What if, Sarah, instead of you questioning your worth, questioning why you're not good enough, what if instead of saying really negative things to yourself, you made a promise for five days to only say nice things? What if you took time and put the rest of the world on hold to journal about every single success you've ever had in your life? What if you made a list of all the people that love and support you and compliment you and love you and encourage you? What if every day you made it a point to talk to one of those people or to spend time around one of those people? What if you spent time every day looking through your successes and adding to that list with the wins of the day? 
What if you paid more attention to the compliments that people gave you when they were grateful for your services instead of blowing off the compliment? Because what happens when somebody says, oh my gosh, Shara, you were so helpful. You were so amazing. What does your inner voice say? Yeah, but. Yeah, but. Your inner voice is like, yeah, she doesn't mean that. She's just saying that to be nice. Or it could have been better. Or I could have done this differently. Or I could have, should have, whatever, right? So you're refuting it. You are downplaying that compliment when legit, that person that's handing you that beautiful compliment means it. And if you paid more attention to those, you would start to build your confidence and you would strengthen your mindset. When your mindset is strong, you can bust through any block and you can shred the limits with your fingers. It all comes down to where you're focusing. What are you paying attention to? What are you allowing to influence your thoughts? Because here's the deal. You are always in control. It's a beautiful thing about free will. There's always a choice. Always, 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 always. And if you say that you don't have a choice, I would love to sit down and like help you find that yes, yes there is. <laughs> because that is my biggest pet peeve. I don't have a choice. My husband is making me, my kids won't let me, blah, 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 blah. They're all excuses. They're cover-ups for fear. So you always have a choice. If you want to feel more empowered, then you can choose to start thinking empowering thoughts. You can choose to start talking to yourself in ways that lift up your vibe, that make you feel special and wanted. You can choose to ignore or minimize your exposure to people who don't share that belief. It takes a minute, Sarah. It's not, I would love to say that like, hey, here's some fairy dust and yes, I'm gonna believe it. I have been doing this work for a really long time and I still feel on a regular basis that I'm not good enough. It, that fear and that doubt comes up anytime I'm doing something new. I have a terrible case of perfectionism like that syndrome to have to have everything perfect. I seriously fear that people are judging me every single time I turn around. It doesn't go away. But what does happen is that you get stronger and you get more resilient and resistant to it. So you can catch those thoughts as they come in and go, I am not going to listen to you. I'm not gonna entertain that because I know that I'm better than that. I know that this is just a thought. This is just a threat and it's not going to serve me. It's not going to be helpful to continue to think this way. It's, it's only going to hold me back and keep me down. And I am not, I'm not available for that. I am doing this thing and I'm going to do it once and it might not be good. And I'm going to do it again and it's going to get better. And I'm going to do it again and it's going to be even better. So if something specific comes up for you, let me know. And we'll work through that. So one of the last things that was in the comments, and if you guys have any other questions, please pop them in. I hope this is helpful for you guys. Am I saying anything that resonates? I'm no longer interested in spiraling down. I'm only spiraling up 150%. Yeah, I'm just not. And one of my favorite things to say is I'm not making myself available for fill in the blank. I'm not making myself available for bullshit people. Sorry, I hope I hope you guys' as kids aren't around. Sorry, sorry, Tara. I'm not making myself available for negative Nancys. I'm not making myself available for uh, people who don't respect my boundaries or my time or my value or what I bring to the world. I'm not making myself available for people that don't get it. <laughs> I really don't got time to explain it to you. You know, let me know. I got a book for that. <laughs> Go read it, <laughs> right? Like if you want to do the work and you want to better yourself, I will meet you halfway. But I am not going to drag you along with me. Not at all, right? So you just have to decide like what you're willing to deal with and what you're not and make that decision. And once the decision is made, all bets are off because that's the universe will like abide by your rules, you get to make them. So as soon as you decide this is the way it's gonna be, the universe will be like, okay, 
I gotcha. I hear you loud and clear. Let me help you make that happen. If you decide you're going to be a millionaire, the universe, it, like not hope, not wish, you have to align yourself with positive expectation and decision. When you decide it, the universe is going to go, okay, let's see how we can make that happen. We always have a choice. Sometimes we don't realize the choice we've made. Yes. Joy, can I share with you my favorite quote? Are you guys so sick of hearing my favorite quote over and over? She's aware that there are grown-up words. Yeah, I know. I slip every once in a while. Sorry. When I get passionate, sometimes like it just comes out. I need to try to censor myself better. Um, we always have a choice. So I don't know if you guys are like old classic rock fans. I grew up, my dad was a drummer in a band and you know, he was, it was like in the seventies and early eighties. So I grew up listening to like Zeppelin and Floyd and, uh, Petty and Rush. Rush, one of my favorite songs of all time, my whole life has been Rush Free Will. And one of the lyrics in there, which I say is a quote is if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. And legit, like that is the essence of free will. You always have a choice. And even if you avoid the choosing, you're choosing something. So you're choosing not to be in control. So when you're making a choice and a conscious choice, you are choosing control. You are choosing your destiny. You are choosing to shape your reality and make sure that your reality matches your vision. If you're avoiding that choice, you're leaving it up to chance. You're letting other people decide. You're choosing to react rather, to become, rather than to be proactive. So there's always, always, always a choice. Oh, mm, I love that. You've been cutting out the word try. Yeah, don't try. Just do it. When you say I'll try, you're saying I'm going to half-ass it and then fail, right? And I'm, I'm going to oh, be okay with myself if that happens. No, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to learn something and I'm going to grow and I'm going to celebrate myself for doing something that was uncomfortable or different. And I'm going to love myself as a result, regardless of what happens. I'm not attached to the outcome. I'm attached to the growth in the learning opportunity. And that's exciting. So if the only goal is to learn and grow and become a better version of yourself and maybe help somebody in the process, you'll never fail. And you'll never have to try again. Your life will be nothing but a series of successes. Right on? <laughs> okay, what is the last one in here? Oh, the definition of success. So we talked about, we talked about that a little bit. So what is the, well, we talked about money not being in your control. Money making you feel uncomfortable. That's because, so the reason you feel uncomfortable with money, around money, the subject of money is exactly that because you are not in control. The minute you decide to take control of it, it's not uncomfortable anymore, right? Anytime something is, is outside of your control, it sure it's uncomfortable because you're leaving it to chance. You're letting somebody, like you're giving up your free will, right? So when you get in control and you vow and decide that you're gonna be in charge of money, not only what you currently have, but what you're bringing into your experience in the future, when you decide that, done. The more you continue to exercise that control, the more confident you're going to be. And when it comes to success, success, I like that you say the definition of success isn't necessarily about money. And I agree with you. Success is much more than money. Money is just one area of your life. You can be happy without money. Sure. You can be very successful without money. A hundred percent. You know, there are a lot of people that are that are successful in so many areas of your life. You can have a successful relationship, a marriage. You can be a successful mom. You can be a successful gardener. You can be successful in, in your church or your, you know, charitable organization or whatever, right? You can be a successful connector of people. There are a lot of ways to be successful. So the definition of success doesn't necessarily have to include your financial position, but I would, I would take some time to, you know, really just hone in on that area of your life and say, what is financial success for me and how do I define that? So not the overall definition of success in your life, but just that one, compartmentalize it and say, what is financial success for, success for me and why? 
And are you avoiding that because deep down you're afraid you'll never get it and you don't want to set yourself up for failure? And is that the real fear? And if so, how do we change that? How do we work on that? How do we decide that that failure is not an option, that success is the only, or that, that financial success or hitting your money goals is the only option? And in doing that, I would recommend incremental upgrades. So don't set big, crazy, audacious goals that scare you and freak you out and make you feel small and inferior, but set goals that are small and just outside of where you're currently comfortable. So I'm going to, you know, set up a certain savings plan. That's it. I'm going to, I'm going to save 10 bucks a week. Done. I'm going to, you know, increase my income by 10% this year or 10% in the next three months. Do something that feels tangible and realistic to you just so that you can prove to yourself that you are capable of being in control and achieving. And the more you set yourself up this way and the more you achieve success and you realize that you are capable, the easier it's gonna be to increase those goals and to let go of the fear around making a lot of money or making more money than you've ever fathomed, you're easing into it slowly. Is that helpful at all? I can talk forever when it comes to this stuff. So I won't stay on any longer unless there's another question. Does anybody have any questions that you'd like me to, to answer or any other ways that I can be helpful? Of course, I think most of you are Christine. I didn't know you had Christine in your group, Tara. Oh my gosh. I have not seen you in forever. Holy moly, big hugs. Christine, can I just say you guys, can I get can I get vulnerable a little bit? My best year ever video from Hal Elrod's event that I posted, I'll I'll end up posting it again at some point where I was bawling my eyes out in a hotel room. It was that video diary that that day at the Hoffman retreat. Yes. So I think she hopped off. I don't think she's there anymore, but I met Christine at that event and we did a little powwow circle and she was, she was one of the first people that I've ever cried with publicly. <laughs> so she was the one that encouraged the tears and was amazingly supportive. And we connected and she shared her story. She's got a beautiful story and an amazing son. And it was it was powerful. So my like bawling your eyes out my eyes out uh, video diary. It's kind of her fault. <laughs> but she, Christine, if you if you're still here or if you happen to watch the replay, oh my gosh, I love you. Okay, so you guys, you know that you can come hang out with me. Most of you are already in my Profit Party Facebook group. If you're not, come hang out with me there. And if you have questions or if I can help support you in any way. Go there and tag me, ask your questions. It's a support group and that's all it's for. So I wanna help you make the money you deserve, feel really, really empowered and in love with yourself so that there's no limits and there's no obstacles and blocks that you have everything you need already to be amazing and to be incredibly wealthy. And if there is something stopping you, I wanna help you get rid of it. So it was really, really awesome hanging out with you. Tara, thank you for having me in your group. It is a pleasure as always. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Love you all to pieces. Talk to you soon. Bye.